Greetings. My name is Joan Marcus, and I currently serve as the Dean at the School of Business, Woodbury University in California. 2020 has been an interesting year so far for each of us, and most definitely for the world of business. Since we all, to some extent, are part of that world as employers, employees, suppliers, or customers, we have all experienced the effects of the recent pandemic, as well as the mounting social unrest that has its foundations in long-standing inequities and mistreatments of large parts in our society. It's completely understandable that upon reflecting on the spirit of these times, our collective emotions fluctuate from frustration to anger, amazement to resignation, and confusion to grief. As a seasoned educator and author, I often wonder whether the values I teach and write about, ethical considerations, interpersonal behavior, collaboration, conflict, respect for diverse backgrounds, and leadership, whether these should even be taught because I think of them as innate human characteristics. And yet, when I get confronted with unnecessary and wrongful killings, such as the ones on Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and Richard Brooks, to just name a few recent atrocities, I realize that even basic concepts of mutual respect and acceptance need to be reinforced regularly and compellingly. Early in June, the Washington Post published an article written by Osagi Obasogi titled, Police Killing Black People is a Pandemic Too. The article explains that while we usually think of pandemics as unforeseeable acts of God that emerge suddenly to wreak havoc on unsuspecting populations, we should consider that pandemics often also have a political aspect behind them, where substandard living and working conditions connected to social inequalities produce opportunities for disease to spread unchecked. Obasogi stresses that police violence is a public health problem with one in every thousand black men dying at the hands of police. He also underscores that inequities in society often lead to some parts being more severely affected than others. And indeed, a Washington Post analysis from April this year yielded that majority black counties have three times the rate of infections and nearly six times the rate of deaths as their white counterparts. There's no need to delve deeper into facts that we're all aware of. The important action item on our plate today is, how do we actually do something about the plight of inequity? How do we infuse greater acceptance for diversity and inclusion in every environment and particularly in workplaces? I recently facilitated an MBA course on this topic. And my students and I formulated a number of awareness-enhancing efforts that we all should be mindful of. Allow me to mention six of these interrelated points, which I consider good for society and good for business. One, we have to inspect and, where needed, adjust our mental models. Mental models are something we all hold. We have those mental models, and yet many of us are not aware that we have them. They're just our explanation on how the world works, shortcuts based on what we experienced in the past and just used as a way of handling future decisions. They dictate not only our decisions, but also our behaviors. They can be useful, but they can also be very limiting. Two. We have to seriously confront our unconscious biases. Human beings develop biases through the groups that they interact with and the beliefs that they hold or what they see and hear around them. We've seen that 
in the recent situations that we got confronted with. Some of these biases can be very destructive to society and to ourselves. Three, we have to be mindful of the in-group and out-group syndrome. Our tribal instincts cause us to unconsciously create such in-groups and out-groups. What are they? Well, they consist of people that we feel more comfortable with. Those are usually our in-group, those that we want to interact more with and trust more, versus those who look and behave differently than we do and with whom we don't feel as comfortable. And it's only when we have been part of an out-group that we realize how painful and alienating that can be. Four, we should respect and embrace rather than avoid differences. A diverse community in and outside the workforce is a cause worthy of support. Why? Because it induces more creative outcomes, because it gives access to a wider range of society, but most and first and foremost, because it's simply the morally right thing to do. Five, we should terminate sexism and bigotry. It is so easy to fall prey to the preference of those that look and think like us. But that is exactly what prevents us from rising above limiting structures and stagnant performance. Six, we should secure diversity at every level. Diversity in race, gender, abilities, generations, and other regards is often limited to lower and mid-levels. That is where you can see a lot of diversity, especially in workplaces, in organizations. But it should be manifested at the top level of any organization as well. Business is a powerful constituent in society. But there has been a fundamentally limiting mindset at its foundation. One of profit at any cost and in any case. That mindset is now obsolete and even destructive to our living global community. It is time to change the narrative of business to one of respect, reciprocity, and constructive functionality in the communities we serve. It's only when we focus on what's good for society that we also ensure what's good for business.